Okay then gang, so now we've made it really easy to turn the site into some kind of single page application where HTMX dynamically swaps the content in and out of the same page when we click on links. And we did that in the last lesson by using HXBoost. But as well as HXBoost doing this for us when it comes to links, it also adds functionality to the forms we add to the site. So in this lesson, we'll be making a form on the home page which we're going to use to make post requests to the server to add new articles. And as a response to those post requests, the server is going to send us back a new HTML template of the article list with the new article within it that we just added. And that's going to be swapped in to replace the current article list right here, all of it. Once we've done that, we're going to talk about how using HXBoost affects that form as well. So then I'm on the index view and right here where we have this comment in the footer, I'm going to add a new form elements. And then after that, let's get rid of these. We don't need these just yet. After the form, or rather inside the form, we're going to have an input field. And this input is going to be of type text. So let's specify that. We also want a name for this input field. And that is going to be the name, so the name of the book. And then a placeholder as well. Or not the name of the book, sorry, the name of the article. And a placeholder, which is article name. And then we'll also make this required. So we'll add on the required attribute as well. All right, so that's the input for the name of the article. Next, we'll do a text area. And this text area is gonna have a name of body. So this is for the article body. Then we want a placeholder. And that is gonna be equal to article body. And then finally, let's make this required as well. Then we also need a button. So we'll say button.btn, that's the class. and we need a type, which is equal to submit. And then we'll do some text for the button, which is add article. All right, cool. OK, so now we need to add some HTML controls to this form so that it sends a post request when we submit it. And we also need to specify the target of the new HTML response content when we get it. So then let's add the HX post attribute first of all. And we're going to set that equal to forward slash articles. Now, we don't have a request handler set up for this in the back end yet, but we will make one shortly. First, though, we also need the HX tag attribute to say where the HTML template we get back from the server should be swapped into. And that's going to be the article list class, which is the div tag that wraps the whole list of articles. So we're going to replace the entire list of articles in the HTML with the new list of articles, which will include the new one we just added. Now, a different approach to this would be to just send back a template for a single article, the new one, which we can then append to the list. However, to save us time, we're sending back the whole list template because remember, we've already made a view for a list which we can reuse. If we just sent back a single article card template, we'd have to make a completely new view for that. So for the sake of this tutorial, we'll be using the whole list view and we're gonna send that template back. So then they're the only two attributes we need right now. And next up, we need to make a handler function for this post request on the back end. So let's do that right here then. I'm going to say router.post because we want to handle a post request to forward slash articles. Then we need a handler function, which takes in the request and the response objects. OK, so what do we want to do inside this handler function? Well, the first thing we want to do is take the new article that a user is submitting and add it to the data. So then let's first of all grab the article information from the request body. So when we submit something from a form like this, we get access to the request body, which contains these fields and the names of these fields are going to be the properties on that body. So we'll have a body property and a name property. So for example, I could say const name is equal to request dot body dot name. And then also I could say const body is equal to request.body.body .body again, because <laughs> the name of the field is body, right? And it's on the request body. Now, instead of doing that twice, I'm gonna do a little bit of destructuring. So we want the name and we want the body, and we set that equal to request.body, and that does exactly the same thing. All right, so we have that now, and we want to now create a new article object that we can add to the articles array. So let's do that, we'll say const article, is equal to an object. Now, the first thing we need inside this object is actually an ID, which if we take a look over here is a number. Now, ideally, you probably want to use some kind of library that generates a unique ID for you. But in our case, I'm just going to say math.floor and then I'm going to take math.random 
which gets a random number between zero and one. And I'm gonna times that by a massive number, like a million or something. And that should give us a unique ID for this application. Now there is a very small chance it won't give us a unique ID. I think for this tutorial it's absolutely fine. But like I said, don't do this for any kind of production applications. Use some kind of a unique ID generator. All right, so next up we want a name property and also the body property. And that's our article object. Now we just need to push it to the articles array. So articles.push and push on the new article. So we've taken the data from the request now, the push request, and we've added it to our data. Next, we want to render the list template and send that back. So let's say response.render, and we want to render the partials forward slash list view. So that's a list of all the articles, and we need to pass in the articles. So let's do that like so. All right then, so now if we try to add some new article and submit the form, we can see that the new article gets added to the list and that new list replaced the old one right here, cool. But what effect does hxboost on the body tag have on this form? Well, when we use hxboost, what HTMX does is look at the standard behavior of HTML elements and their hypermedia controls and it supercharges them or boosts them. So for example, we made links in the last lesson with href attributes before, right? And htmx boosts those links to behave in a more htmx-like way using those attributes like hxgets and hxtarget. And it also allows for that fallback of just using href in the browser for links if JavaScript is disabled. Now, when it comes to forms, it does a similar thing. It expects us to use the original form controls for HTML instead of using htmx ones like hxpost. And those original form controls are just method and action. Method to specify the request type, post in this case, and action to provide the URL that the post request should get sent to. And then htmx, when we use hxboost, replaces those two attributes with hxpost. And again, when JavaScript is disabled, the form should still work because it has those two original controls on it, the action and the method that the browser knows how to use. Now, when we used hxboost for links, it also automatically assigned the body to be the target. And the same is true for the form and would probably be good if you're relocating to a new page and the entire body content needs swapping. But in our case, we're overriding that on this form by saying hx target is equal to the article list. But again, if you're happy at replacing the whole body content, you don't need this here. All right then, so let's try adding a new article again, just to make sure this all works. And yep, we can see that the new article appears right here. Okay, cool. But there's one more thing you might not have noticed going on here, and that is that HTMX has also pushed the action URL that the post request is sent to, which is forward slash articles, onto the history. And we can verify that by looking at the address bar when we submit the form. So let me go back to the index page and refresh and then fill in any old junk into the form. And when we hit submit, look at the address bar at the top, right? And you're gonna see that it updates to be forward slash articles when we submit, which is where the post request gets sent to. And this is happening because HX boost, remember, also applies that other attribute, which is HX push URL. And that attribute updates the address bar and pushes the URL onto the history, which we don't really want in this case when we're just submitting this form. So the way around this then is to override the HX push URL value on the form tag itself by adding it and set an equal to false. And when we do that for this form, HTMX won't push the URL onto the history when we submit it, and it won't update the address bar either. And let's just take a look at this to make sure it works. I'm gonna type any old junk in over here. Hopefully we won't see the new URL go up here. Add the article, and yep, it's not. So that's HX Boost with forms.